Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, September the 16th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Bear with me. I have the cold from hell. We'll try to work through it. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in boxing, it is very important. In fact, it is essential to the credibility of the sport that whether you're an underdog or the overwhelming favorite, the champion, that the same rules apply. In other words, whether you're an underdog or the champion, if you hit the canvas, you have 10 seconds to get up. Right? We don't say the underdog has nine seconds to get up or eight seconds to get up. Right? We understand when you say the phrase, may the best man win, the same rules should apply to both men in the ring or women. Well, let me just say, I watched this Tyson Fury fight. It's one of the defining fights of our time. It's certainly one of the important fights in Fury's career. Now, while he outboxed Otto Wallen, right, he outboxed Wallen. Let's face it, he should have lost his title to Wallen. His cut was that bad. In the comment section here, so all of us, me, you, your friends, can see on the internet. I want you to tell me, or better yet, to explain to me what the difference was between Saturday night's fight between Fury and Wallen and the fight from an earlier generation between, quite frankly, perhaps the two best heavyweights of the last 30 years, Lennox Lewis and Vitaly Klitschko. Understand, in that fight, Lewis's last fight, right? Lewis had the common sense to see the writing on the wall. In a very spirited match, Lewis cut Vitaly on the brow. The cut started streaming. The fans were into it. It was the biggest challenge Lewis, who, let's face it, beat Evander Holyfield twice, beat Mike Tyson in a non-competitive fight, crushed Michael Grant, right? Lewis was rolling at that point. The challenge mounted by Vitaly Klitschko was the most meaningful challenge Lewis had faced in several years. And because the cut was that bad, dare I say, because the cut was Tyson Fury, Otto Wallen level, they stopped the fight. Right? Understand, Lennox Lewis never fights Vitaly Klitschko again. In fact, Lennox Lewis never fought again, right? That fight's a classic. Stopped in the middle rounds. I encourage you to look it up here on YouTube. Now, let me just say, this fight, the Fury fight, the only difference I can see is that Valen was a more overwhelming underdog. I think you and I know <coughs> that if Wallen had the cut Fury did, they would have stopped the fight. If Fury wasn't viewed as an overwhelming favorite, if we didn't know that Fury scheduled to fight Deontay Wilder next in a highly anticipated rematch, the fight would have been stopped. But let's get more foundational than that. The outcome is based on a lie. You know it's a lie. After the fight, Fury on camera said that he couldn't see out of the eye. He told that to you directly. But yet, 
when the doctor came in the ring and they asked Fury's corner Fury's corner said he can see out of the eye <coughs> in other words had Tyson Fury told the truth the fight would have been stopped Valen would officially have the title now again I thought Fury outboxed him on the scorecards. But either we have rules in boxing or we don't. You knew Fury was having problems seeing out of the eye because he himself was trying to wipe blood away. You noticed this cornerman, Capitillo, would get it to stop bleeding and then about 20 seconds into the very next round it was gushing again gushing. You know, as you were looking at the fight, knowing that Valen wasn't cut for most of it, and Fury was the guy who was cut, you looked at Tony Weeks, the referee's shirt, and you saw a lot of blood. That's how bad it was. You want to know how bad it was when they interviewed Valen after the fight? Look at his back, folks. You're going to see blood droplets on his back. I'm just telling you that was Tyson Fury's blood. So let's not kid ourselves. <coughs> Boxing's an expectation game. Right? Tyson Fury was the overwhelming betting favorite. We expected him to win. So we decided to overlook the rules. So there he is with a cut that even Vito Altofermo, if you're an old-timer, would have been embarrassed by the amount of blood it was gushing. Right? We saw that the cut was bad enough for the title to change hands. Right? The rules didn't change in the middle of the fight, folks. We saw that the cut was bad enough to dirty up the referee shirt. And we looked the other way. Why? because Tyson Fury is the unbeaten lineal world heavyweight champion. I thought he got preferential treatment here. I'm a big Tyson Fury fan. I do think he's the best heavyweight on the planet. But he got a break here. And the problem with fighters getting breaks like this in the ring is it changes lives. Otto Wallen right now should be going back to his home country wearing a belt. When you hit a man and open up a cut off a punch, and there's no question that the cut was caused off a punch. No question whatsoever. And when that cut becomes so substantial, just like the Vitaly Klitschko cut, when that cut becomes so substantial that you can't tell if the referee was wearing a white or a pink shirt. You're seeing blood all down the side of Fury's nose. When you know that level of cut in a non-title fight would result in a stoppage, then dare I say something is wrong in boxing when the fight is not stopped. <coughs> I thought Valen got robbed because I thought the rules were bent. Now let me be clear here. It's part of boxing folklore. You see it in movies like Rocky V, right? Or the most recent Rocky, where Sylvester Stallone has a fighter who can't see. By the way, the referee never even talks to Fury and says, how many fingers am I holding up? Right? Well, in Rocky, Sylvester Stallone squeezes his fighter's shoulder. So the fighter who can't see is able to tell the referee, oh, three fingers, based on the three squeezes, right? Let's face it, we know these fighters are warriors. A guy could have a broken leg, and he would try to convince the ref to allow him to continue, right? But what should have happened here is what happened in the Ezard Charles-Rocky Marciano rematch. There, Ezard Charles, who had gone the distance with Rocky <coughs> in their first fight, cuts Rocky's nose. It's a bad cut. 
And according to folklore, the referee said to him, Rocky, I'm only going to give you one more round. And the reason Marciano retired unbeaten was because in that round, Marciano got the stoppage. Tyson Fury should have received an ultimatum here. Right? This is part of the bias in boxing that is troubling. Had Wallen had a big name like Lennox Lewis, <coughs> the fight would have been stopped. Let's talk about some other observations in the fight, the actual boxing mechanics. If you're a Tyson Fury person, and Fury had to fight small to win this fight, right? For those of you who didn't realize Fury could fight small, this fight's Exhibit A, right? Fury decides he's going to come inside. Fury, who's four inches taller than Valen, stoops down, puts his head on Valen's chest, right? Puts on a show on the inside. But don't get fooled by the dazzling show. Some things didn't work for Fury in this fight. Right first, <clears throat> can we agree that against the Southpaw, in this fight Tyson Fury was not comfortable and was not effective on his back foot fighting out of a Southpaw stance. Right? He just wasn't, folks. Valen got him off his back foot. Not only does Valen cut him, but then Fury himself realizes he was getting clipped too much. His defense was falling apart when he was on his back foot. Right? He couldn't, even though Fury's ambidextrous, he couldn't fight Valen from distance out of a southpaw stance. Let's also say, too, he's lucky he was fighting Valen. Understand, Fury decides he's going to come inside. So, with his cut, he's trying to hide the cut. He doesn't want Valen to actually be able to hit him on the cut. <coughs> Folks, it's that bad. It's that bad. So Fury at times, look at, look at the film, puts the cut on Valen's chest. Right? Fury is fighting low. He's putting his head literally up against Valen's body. Now let me just say, He's lucky Valen is a young guy. He's lucky Valen wasn't, let's say, a crafty James Tony or somebody. Right? If a guy is putting his cut up on your body, don't you realize in boxing that there's more to injuring a guy than punching the guy? Why didn't Valen just move forward, try to rip the cut open with his body? How about this one? Why didn't Valen put his hand where Fury was trying to put his head? Right? Deprive Fury the angle. Better yet, why didn't Valen turn? Give a side profile. Right? Think Floyd Mayweather. Why didn't he turn? Because Fury's trying to throw uppercuts. He's trying to open Valen up. He's trying to put his head on Valen's chest and throw uppercuts. Let's just say some elite fighters, right, Bernard Hopkins is another one, would have forced Fury into their shoulder, right, wouldn't have been vulnerable to Fury's uppercuts because they would have changed the angle on him. Valen will look at the film and he'll figure it out. Let's just say he allows Fury to open him up too much. Right? Valen's feet too often are parallel to Fury's feet. They shouldn't have been. They should have been off at the side. Terrence Crawford was at the fight. It's a pity that Terrence Crawford doesn't weigh another 70 pounds because he would have beaten the version of Tyson Fury who showed up on Saturday night. 
But the biggest condemnation I have of Fury, besides the fact that he lied to keep his title, right? Besides the fact that parts of his game were falling apart, right? He wasn't able to fight Valen, who was a superior athlete from the outside. But the biggest condemnation I had with Fury <coughs> were the stamina issues. Now, he falls apart in the 12th round against Deontay Wilder, doesn't he? He's lingering around. He didn't have the energy to get on his toes and stay away. That's why he gets caught. Well, folks, believe it or not, he falls apart here in the 11th round and the 12th round. Right? Understand, Valen is a southpaw. Andre Ward picks it up on the telecast. Listen to Ward's comments in the 12th round. Fury's so discombobulated that against a southpaw, Fury is moving toward his right into Valen's power left. He's moving the wrong way. He's moving toward Valen's left hand. And of course, Valen starts landing shots because Fury is tired, right? Don't go by Fury's facial expressions. Fighters are bluffers. They're poker players, right? Fury's looking the same way he looked in the 10th round, the same way he looked in the 9th round, the same way he looked in the 8th round. No, count the punches that are landing on him. Folks, his game falls off the table late. His body was slimmer. <clears throat> He's getting himself back in a shape. But he has to work on stamina. He could not keep Otto Wallen off of him the last round and a half of this fight. Given that both he and Deontay Wilder know that Wilder can touch him, can knock him down late in a fight because it's happened. What's going to happen if Wilder, who has stamina, right? Wilder's the one looking energetic at the end of the Bermain Stavern fight, folks. You could say a lot of things about Wilder. He didn't look tired at the end of the Tyson Fury fight. Right? What happens? If Fury falls apart late again in the Wilder rematch. Let me also say too, <coughs> just imagine Fury going the wrong way toward Luis Ortiz's left hand. Doesn't that give a southpaw an opening? This fight was not in the wild excuse me this fight was not in the fury win column until the very end of it understand he's getting battered at times in that 12th round so let's just say the ring rush shows right the reason tyson fury is the best heavyweight is because when his plan A didn't work, and he started the fight on his back foot trying to dance. When his plan A didn't work, he was able to fight small. He was able to come inside. He was able to push the younger Valen backwards. He was able to hide the cut somewhat by placing his head on Valen's chest. He was able to figure out in the middle of the fight that he could land uppercuts then he starts throwing uppercuts with both hands. Don't get me wrong, he did a lot of stuff right. He did a lot of stuff right. He did outbox Valen. But he had to lie to keep his title. He couldn't see out of that eye. The cut's so bad, folks, that there are actually two cuts. Right? There are two cuts. Let me just say two. At one point, his quarter, I thought there was some shady stuff going on. At one point, his quarter puts a blob of grease on the cut. And, of course, they stop the fight to wipe the grease off. Then later in the fight, <coughs> his glove suddenly starts, the tape starts to come off. Folks, 
Angelo Dundee back in the day in Ali's corner for the Henry Cooper fight would have felt embarrassed in my opinion by the extent to which Fury's corner in my opinion was trying to buy him time there's no way there's no way that Capitillo the corner man didn't know that they'd have to stop the fight to wipe some of the blob off giving Fury valuable seconds right the long and short of it is that an overwhelming underdog doesn't have the heavyweight title because we gave Tyson Fury favorable treatment here right don't get me wrong like the next man I want to see Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder but I also want to see fairness in boxing and I have no doubt whatsoever that if Volin was cut like Fury was cut this fight would have been stopped I give Fury's performance a B minus sure he's a warrior sure he did what fighters do right they come over they say hey can you see out of the eye and the person's like yes I can see right somebody tell me in the comment section why the doctor didn't say how many fingers do I have up isn't that part of boxing folklore why didn't Tony Weeks come over at one point when the blood's gushing and say to Fury look that cut looks terrible I'm going to give you three more minutes I'm going to give you this round to try to save your title right the fight should have been stopped as controversial as that opinion was right if you're not gonna stop this fight then we should have seen the second half of Lennox Lewis against Vitaly Klitschko to the boxing press I hope they track down Vitaly Klitschko ask him about this fight track down Lennox Lewis ask him about this fight that Lennox Lewis Vitaly Klitschko fight should be viewed on YouTube. You need to ask yourself, what was it about Vitaly's cut that was worse than Tyson Fury's cut? Understand, you can't claim that the blood is not getting in Fury's eye when round after round you see Fury going with his glove. If, if the blood's not a factor then why is Fury doing that? Also, look where the blood is. It's over here. It's on his nose. That's all around the eye, isn't it? <coughs> right? Also, I've seen Fury fight inside. I've mentioned the Derek Chisora fight. Didn't you get the feeling here that he was shrewdly trying to put the cut up against Volin because he understood fighting backwards Valen was landing too many punches and could have completely opened that cut up. <coughs> That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.